privileges sometimes come our way, but sometimes we create our own. If you've got one of the latest Fujifilm cameras, you are probably releasing the diverse film simulation they offer, something not many other cameras can match. But check this out, I might have just managed to pull off something special. I attempt to recreate the famed yet discontinued Fujifilm Pro 400H film style using an old Canon G12 digital camera. That might be a tough one to replicate on any Fujifilm camera. Could this be my only breakthrough? Da, 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 da. I'm just kidding. You could try this recipe with your own Fujifilm camera, but just a heads up, getting that exact look might be a bit tricky. These cameras have their own way of handling colors and white balance among other differences. For example, tweaking the white balance shift reveals entirely different setups on both cameras. From what I've noticed, matching the white balance settings on one to another not so straightforward. They've got those temperature and tint setting position differently. Here, over at Canon, you'll notice the color temperature set along the horizontal axis and the tint or color along the vertical axis. In contrast, Fujifilm does it the other way around. Plus, in my experience, achieving that soft green look on my Fujifilm XQ1 seems a tad more challenging compared to my Canon G12. Fujifilm stock is often linked with a greenish tint, resonating with their green packaging. Meanwhile, Kodak film stocks tends to sway towards warmer color, similar to their red and yellow boxes. Just a little bit something to remember, every film recipe I talk about focuses on a specific look. In the video I did about the classic chrome recipe on the Canon G12, it wasn't about a precise copy of Fujifilm classic chrome, rather I was trying to capture that vintage magazine 5 from the 20th century which is what inspired Fujifilm Classic Chrome. You can check the video if you haven't. Shooting film involves a bunch of variables, how you developed it, scanned it, and the lighting conditions. So nailing down every detail about a film stock, I think it's almost impossible. However, we can pick out the main characteristic of each type of film. In this case, I tried to replicate the exact Pro 400H look from a photo by Marcus the M Photography, a Zurich-based photographer who used Pro 400H film. That was the goal. But you know what? My attempt with Pro 400H recipe didn't match the reference photo perfectly. However, I surprisingly ended up liking the result. If you feel my recipe doesn't quite hit the mark of the original Pro 400H, well, I get it. But I still reckon the picture I got reflect that recognizable greenish Fujifilm style pretty well. Some people say that different film stocks suit different weather conditions. Right now, where I am, it's the dry season with plenty of sunshine. You might want to give this recipe a shot and see how it fits your local weather. Personally, I'm really drawn to those white tones this recipe produces. That cool green vibe and the way it captures the sky quite appealing, isn't it? But hey, the right tones, they are a bit toned down and, and I like it. I'm looking forward to trying this recipe during the upcoming rainy season here. One more thing I dig about the Canon G12, that bloom effect. It's just part and parcel of this camera. Some folks might find it a bit distracting, but personally, I'm all about it. You know, there are folks out there buying filters like Cinebloom to get that kind of effect. And here it is, free of charge, straight out of your old Canon G12. Now that's what I call a real bonus, a privilege. If you don't have a Canon G12, you might want to take a look at my video about inexpensive small old school cameras. They are perfect for creating your own film-like visuals.
All right, let's get to it. No beating around the bush. Here's the recipe. Step one, make sure your image style is set to JPEG. If not, you won't be able to tinker with the custom color settings. That's no fun. Now head to the white balance setting and pick uh, fluorescent edge and hit that display button. You'll end up in um, the white balance shift setting. Adjust the color, that's the up and down bit, to a solid green at 9 or you can say G9 and keep the temperature which is the horizontal setting right in the middle at 0. Then just hit that display button again and you're good to go. Next up, the color setting. Choose custom color then hit display you are about to enter the customization playground and here's what to tweak contrast drop it down by two notches sharpness crank it up by two saturation leave it as is at zero and red nudge it down by two green keep it steady at zero blue bring it down by two and skin tone take it down by two as well and don't forget to set that dynamic range to 400 percent that's your photo superpower right there top tip set your iso to a rock solid 400 if you are shooting at night you might want to bump it up to 800 but don't push it further unless you are cool with grainy photos we are aiming for that fuji pro 400h5 here and finally set the dial mode to program mode you know the p mark your camera has got your back adjusting the shutter speed and aperture on its own but hey, you can always go full manual and you can pick your shutter speed with the dial at the front right here and your aperture with the, the ring at the back right here. And hey, there is always room to play with uh, the exposure compensation dial. But from what I've seen, this recipe doesn't usually need much exposure tweaking. And there you have it, your recipe for some seriously cool stuff. Yep. I think that's it. If you want more top secret hacks and tricks to transform your ancient cameras into Hollywood superstars, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell to join me on this photographic roller coaster. Smack that like button, share the love with your pals, and let's rally the troops for the old camera enthusiast army. Until next time, keep snapping and keep it budget tight. Au revoir.